Hello and welcome to ET Garage. Today's video is going to be about the uh, flow numbers on these uh, L98, uh, aluminum L98 113 heads and how I got ripped off. Like I was saying in the uh, introduction there, uh, this uh, video is about the uh, flow numbers on these cylinder heads and how I got ripped off. We'll go over the flow numbers first and basically uh, the reason I had these heads float is I, I ported these myself and people keep asking me what they flow. Uh, so uh, I figure while it's off I'm waiting for the parts, I'd get them flowed. Uh, I didn't expect a lot. I did. They did flow pretty much what I expected. Uh, stock these heads at 500th lift flow to, flows around 190 from what my research. I'm going to leave uh, pictures of this chart and a chart with the flow numbers for stock heads and a bunch of other uh, version of these heads that were CNC ported by different companies like TPIS, which I think has the best about the best flow numbers on these after uh, his CNC porting. Now, uh, uh, don't expect a lot on these numbers, but here you go. I'm going to read them off at 100 thousandths of lift. I'm just going to read the intake is uh, 55.9 at 200 thousandths is 111.8, 300 thousandths is 162.5, 400 thousandths is 199.8. 500 thousandths is 222.8, and then at 600 thousandths and up, it drops to 204. That's all CFM on the intake. These are 1.94 intake and 1.5 exhaust. So let me know what you think. That's be it's better than stock, still not as good as some of the, uh, the flow numbers that the, uh, these uh, companies that CNC these heads uh, provide. Nowhere near as good as those. Of course, I'm not a professional porter. I don't have access to a flow bench, but uh, that's what it flowed. Anyone, I did a dyno video and that was uh, with it running really rich. I did like 280 something at 280 some horsepower at the rear wheels at like 4,900 RPM and 370 horsepower at the, uh, or 370 foot pounds of torque at uh, 3900 I think it was. I'll leave a picture of that chart up here somewhere. But I did correct the fueling and stuff and both me and the dyno operator said it should make easy 300 at the rear wheels and probably 400 foot pounds of torque. So uh, and it felt like it was once I did the fueling correction and all that and I just never got it back on the dyno. Uh, I will be getting it back on the dyno after this refresh. Anyway, I'm going to go on to how I got ripped off and didn't know it. Anyway, last year I refreshed this motor and then of course I had problems and it's been following those. But uh, basically, uh, the only intake valves, the valve stems were severely worn and the guides were worn and all that stuff. So I took them to a, di a different shop than I did the first time. I should have went back to the same shop I went to before and uh, had them rebuilt. And he uh, apparently only changed one intake valve and I never noticed that. I can't believe I never noticed that until this time when I took them apart to clean them. And if you look, that intake valve is different from that one, that one, and that one. He only changed that one. All these are still the same intake valves with the severely worn valve stems or valve guides or valve, yeah, the valve stems. And uh, I can't believe I didn't notice that when I got them back last year. Uh, I just cleaned them up, did that video on them and put them on and sent it. Also the intake uh, angle is now wrong. I don't know if that happened when he machined them or what, but that's wrong and I have intake sealing problems. But uh, yeah, I can't believe you did that. Also, when I took it apart and cleaned it, you'd see there's a lot of chattering, tool chattering on the, like some of the exhaust seats, and uh, you could tell they were weren't sealing and some other problems. But uh, 
I'm not going to mention the name of that machine shop because I'll probably get in legal trouble. But it was an engine machine shop in Sunbury, Pennsylvania. That's all I'll say. I won't say which one, even though it's the only one. But there's nothing I can do now. It's a year later. Uh, we might be doing business with them or recommending them. I have to decide what to do with these heads. If I rebuild them, I think I might do it myself. If I do, I have to invest in uh, some more tools, which, I don't know, for me isn't a bad thing. I'm always buying tools. Well, those people just buy tools. Uh, still got a lot of things to go yet. It's probably be a month before I get this motor back together because uh, it's part waiting game right now. My pistons are off being coated. The, uh, I had to get a new crankshaft. If you haven't seen them, go back and look at my old videos. That is being balanced. That'll probably have back on it. Like the guy said he'd get to it right away. I told him, yeah, well, a couple of weeks would be fine. And if he does that, that's great. Uh, so hopefully that will all come together at the end of this month. And I just gotta decide on cylinder heads. Maybe I'll do a different video on which heads to choose and uh, leave comments, what do you think? Um, if I do do these heads, I'm going to knock out all these valve guides and put in new valve guides. Do it the hard way. I don't know. I like doing things the hard way. What can I say? But, of course, all new valves. And like I said, I had to invent... Uh, invest in some tooling. I have to invest in then it's also the setting up the springs. You need a, a tool for compressing the springs. I've taken heads apart, put them back together, did things like valve, uh, valve guide seals. Uh, I've ported heads in the past. I just never had them flowed. Other heads, everything from Briggs and Stratton's to God knows what. Uh, at the, Never rebuilt them because you know usually it involves tool and you can do simple. I've done simple valve lapping and stuff like that, but I don't know. Right now I'm a little frustrated uh, with, with these heads anyway, and uh, I don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna end the video here and everybody have a great day. And God bless. <laughs>